Hey everybody, it's Mike here from The Art of Guitar. I'm here with another Fix This Band episode. Uh, I'm always excited every time I know I'm going to do one of these. I wake up and I have this kind of giddy feeling all day. And uh, this one's going to be fun. It's not going to be a Metallica one like I promised last time. Uh, I saw this video and I just felt inspired to do one of these uh, episodes for it. So that's the good part of my job is I can kind of go with whatever I'm uh, excited about. The title of the video on YouTube is Rewind This, Welcome to the Jungle. And I'm going to include a link to the original video so you can watch it all the way through without my commentary. Uh, some people like to do that at first and then come back and watch my commentary afterwards. You can tell a lot just by looking at the freeze frame of the start of the video. It looks like they have a really legit setup. Whoever is in charge of the sound system has some good stuff. So the PA looks legit. You've got monitors in the front. You've got, you know, microphones and that bass rig back there looks really intense. I just don't understand where they're set up. It looks like the front of like an apartment complex or maybe a government building or a college or something. It's really hard to say. It looks like a teenage band, but with like one of their dads is singing. I don't know if he's actually in the band or if he's just like guest starring or something while they're jamming. I have no clue, but uh, let's get started. I'm gonna do this in sections like I always do. So let's start with the intro, obviously. <laughs> The way the rhythm guitar player is playing the intro completely baffles me. I've watched it probably 50 times now and I zoomed in on his hands and it sounds like he's using a delay pedal at the very, very beginning. But what's weird is later on as the song gets going, you if you watch his hand, you could tell he's picking every single note. Uh, he just has really efficient downstrokes. Looks like he's barely picking. And now uh, that's really hard to do, by the way, at this speed. I mean, Slash doesn't even do that. <laughs> I'd much rather do the slash way. Now, when they go to do the epic hits in the beginning of the song, the other guitar player, who's apparently the lead guitar player, kicks into the lead part, except he's in clean sound. And so it's kind of funny to see him. He like looks around, then he comes all the way to the front to engage his distortion pedal. And here's where I really felt bad because not only did he not have the distortion on in the beginning, but when he does engage it, it sounds like a metal zone pedal, like a boss metal zone, cranked up to sound really thin and screechy. <laughs> really a shame because it's you know for guns and roses you can't have that kind of tone it's too extreme here's what i mean here's my normal head sound here <laughs> So my ingle head sounds pretty good. You know, it's pretty full sounding. Now, if I went to clean sound, like he apparently is doing, and then play the metal zone pedal instead, cranked up to sound really crazy and fuzzy and saturated, it would sound like this. By the way, I'm not exaggerating. If you watch a lot of covers on YouTube, you notice a lot of people have that kind of guitar tone. If you look behind him during this video, you can see that he's playing through an orange amp head and those are incredible sounding he could get a really fat sound if he wanted to oh and by the way metal zone pedals don't have to sound that screechy watch i'll dial it in a little bit i thought it was crazy how after the kid hit the distortion pedal the singer the dad whatever he is bends over and he cranks it up so loud that he's totally, you know, drowning out everybody else. So now I can't even hear the rhythm guitar player. Now we get to the vocals. And when I first watched this, I was just crossing my fingers like, please don't suck. Please don't suck. Because if the singer sucks, there's really not a lot of hope for this band. But if the singer can shine through, there might be something we can do that rhymed. Oh, 
Okay, so I'm sure everybody could tell right away that that singer is legit. So he seems like a pro. Like he's up there, he's doing little things that kind of tip off that he's a pro. The way he adjusts the mic stand with one hand, you know, you could tell he's done that a thousand times. And his voice sounds great. He looks calm and comfortable. He's not searching around. He's not reading off of an iPad or anything like that. So he just has this real pro attitude, this pro vibe going on that I really love. The bass player is kind of doing the statue thing that I talk about a lot, where someone's not too confident on stage, so they have to put all their attention on what they're doing. So she ends up looking like a statue, you know, just standing there. Everyone else in the band is doing a decent job, trying to move a little bit, even if they're, you know, like the rhythm guitar player is missing a lot of stuff. But at least he looks a little bit comfortable on stage. He's not quite a statue. I was really happy to hear that the drummer has a cowbell because that part of the song really needs it. When it's not there, it's just missing something. <laughs> Okay, let's check out the second verse and then that short solo that happens right afterwards. That was a bit of a train wreck. A big part of it is the tone, but also the rest of the band isn't supporting the guitar solo at all. The band is supposed to hit a series of B chords to lead you into the solo. But since it's not there, the solo just kind of comes out of nowhere. He's doing okay with the solo. It has to be distracting to have your rhythm section fall apart during your solo. Uh, the drummer's keeping it solid, but everything else is just not there. And so the dad goes back to adjust it because he just knows something's wrong. But he goes to the head instead of the pedal, and that was the big mistake. I think if he really wanted to fix the tone, he would have picked up the metal zone and tossed it across the street or something. The bass player is just playing some chord changes when really it's supposed to be a vamp and E. So like... <laughs> It's something like that. You know, it's kind of like this repeating riff. And if she could have nailed that, the solo would have sounded way better. Now we're on to the next verse, and uh, I'm not going to say much about it because it's kind of like all the other verses. That was damn impressive. This singer is blowing my mind right now. Uh, he's hitting all those notes really strong. And the lead guitar player, even though his you know tone is all shrill, is sounding really good locked in during that part. But before that, we have the breakdown part. And that's when everything's supposed to calm down a little bit. We have to dial back the distortion, in his case, by a lot. So if you turn your volume down, let's say you're fully distorted. If you roll back your volume, could get pretty clean. That would have sounded great. Even with his metal zone, if you would have dialed his distortion back with his volume, it would have sounded way more pleasing during the breakdown. But instead, he's at full distortion and it's just not cool with open chords. <laughs> the bass player and the rhythm guitar player seem to be hitting A to D. When this part's supposed to be D to G. So of course that's going to clash with what the lead guitar player is doing. Uh, the dad once again bends over to adjust the pedal this time. 
So I thought there was going to be some hope. But instead, he turns up the treble, which is the last thing you want to do. He's like doing the opposite of what's needed. He might be an awesome singer, but he's not sure what to do when it comes to fixing the guitar tone, at least in this case. You know, at least he knows something's wrong and he's trying, but uh, he's actually making it worse. All right, so we had that killer buildup with those high soaring vocals. Let's see what the guitar solo is like. That was so painful to watch as a lead guitar player myself. Once again, there's no support going on during that part. The bassist is going back to that A to D switch, which is not right for this part. And uh, the rhythm guitar player just quits playing altogether. I always laugh when that happens because he's either so lost that he just doesn't want to make it worse by playing the wrong thing, or he just never plays during that part. It's really hard to say. Now that lead guitar player, who's pretty decent at guitar, he didn't nail the solo, but he would have sounded way better if the rest of the band were playing what they were supposed to. Okay, now let's go to the uh, George of the Jungle part of the song. No surprise, the singer nailed that part, and uh, he did so well, the rhythm guitar player just kind of sat there with a big smile, like an audience member or something, just watching. The lead guitarist was doing some cool stuff. That part's really fun, because you could just make a bunch of noises and stuff. One time I picked up a shot glass, and I just made a bunch of weird slidey sounds, and it worked. The part that bummed me out was the hits coming out of that have to be so tight and so powerful. It's one of my favorite parts of the song, actually. Just... <laughs> When you only have the drummer and the lead guitar player hitting those, it just loses all its power. But, uh, you know, you might as well be the White Stripes at this point, just because the other two aren't even contributing during that part. Props do go to the bass player, though, for playing the George of the Jungle bass line really well. Uh, it sounded really tight. And through that rig, it just sounds incredible. Okay, let's get to the last chorus to the end of the song, and let's see what happens. The vocal part on that end chorus is so insanely high that I've only seen a few people really pull it off well, and he's one of them. The last chorus sounded pretty good, just like the other choruses did, except once again, they missed the hits. So, you know, the first time these hits were missing. This time it's the epic walk down hits that they're missing. Couldn't really tell if the bass player was playing along, but if so, it wasn't very tight. That ending just has to really punch you in the face. And then the guy I keep calling the dad of the band, he steps out, turns around, and bows to the band, which tells me he was just sitting in. Like, okay, good job, guys. See you later. I'm going to go back here and uh, drink a beer and watch you play the rest of the show. Something this video proves is the power of having a great vocalist and a great drummer. I mean, it's almost like a train where you have the engine and the caboose running the show going forward, and everything in the middle is just kind of going along for the ride. If I was coaching this band, and if the dad was actually their main singer, I would say, okay, so it's kind of like everything on the outside is solid. 
but the middle is still uncooked and gooey. You know, you really have to congeal together. So I would work to bring the level of the bass player and the rhythm guitar player up quite a bit, starting with maybe some charts they can follow and then uh, memorize. And then hopefully they're playing at least the right parts during the song. So the parts come first, then the confidence comes later. And then all of a sudden you're relaxed on stage and you're sounding great. The lead guitar player, I think the first thing I would do is I would run over his metal zone pedal with my car and I would be like, you're plugging into the orange head and we're going to dial in the distortion from there. I would for sure work with the lead guitar player to tighten up those leads. But like I said earlier, if the rest of the band was playing, you know, the right stuff, what he was playing would sound just fine, most likely. But uh, there's still a lot of room to improve with the details of those solos. Give a band like this three rehearsals, you know, once everybody's on the same page and I bet you they'll just be next level. But you they'll really impress a lot of people, at least with this song. Okay, everyone, like always, feel free to leave your thoughts in the comment section. Thank you for watching. I've got a ton of video ideas for this week, so uh, keep an eye out for those. We'll catch you later. Bye-bye.